take 22. Welcome to Precalculus Lesson 6, Rational Functions. Rational functions are functions that have a variable in the denominator, thus making a fraction. That's why they're called rational functions. But before we do that, a word from our sponsors. Root 2 and root negative 1 were sitting down at uh, the table talking. Root 2 said something uh, highly emotional, at which time root negative 1 said to, to him, Hey, you're irrational. Then root 2 retorted to root negative 1, Get real. Yeah, I know it's a lame joke, but they're all lame. So I'm going to pause here, right here, so I don't have to redo this. Because, you know, I just said I was on take 22. Ah, going crazy. Okay, the simplest of all rational functions are rational functions that have a constant in the numerator. So let's go ahead and look at those. And I really think we want to focus in on this function right here. So I'll do that and see if it works. Woohoo! It works! So, that function y is going to be undefined where the denominator is equal to zero. So, what makes that denominator a zero? When x equals h, right over here. And then, with a constant in the numerator, the horizontal asymptote is always going to be at y equals k. And I think I'm going to pause here before I move on. All right, let's look at y equals 2 over x plus 3 minus 4. What is going to make that denominator a 0? That's pretty obvious. If x equals negative 3, so, the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 3. Isn't that cool that my eraser is actually writing? All right, how about the horizontal asymptote? That would be y equals negative 4. And then we could go about plotting points and graph that if we needed to. Let's go ahead and look at our next function. What's going to make the denominator 0? x equals 6, right? That will be our vertical asymptote. Okay, And the horizontal asymptote, you ask? Oh, but of course. y equals negative 10. And I think that's about all I have to say about rational functions with a constant in the numerator. So let's go ahead and see what happens when rational functions also have a variable in the numerator. Rational functions with variable expressions in the numerator. We're going to look at the vertical asymptotes. Of course, we've already done that. The vertical asymptotes are the zeros for the denominator. So let's go ahead and look at these. What is the vertical asymptote? It is, yes, right, x equals 3. Good. Next function. Uh-oh. You never told me I was going to have to factor. x squared plus 6, 8 plus x. 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 Two factors of 8 that add up to 6. That's easy. Plus 2. Plus 4. So this will have vertical asymptotes at x equals 
negative 4 and at negative 2. Okay, let's go ahead and look how to find the horizontal asymptotes. Okay, rational functional functions with variable expressions in the numerator. Three ways to determine what the horizontal asymptotes are. First way, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. If the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then a horizontal asymptote exists at the lead coefficient of the numerator over the lead coefficient of the denominator. Let's see here, less than, equal, what about greater? If the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then no horizontal asymptote exists. So let's go ahead and put uh, these into practice. Dude, this, you guys, this has been way more than 22 takes. I've just managed to do a little bit better with the editing. Whew. And is that editing ever going crazy? So, rational function. You've got x cubed plus 8 in the denominator. Well, good thing for us that uh, binomial can be factored into a binomial and a trinomial. The binomial can be found by replicating the sign and then taking the cube root of both of the uh, terms for those cubes. The cube root of x cubed, x. The cube root of 8, 2. Now let's go ahead and find the trinomial. We're actually going to use the binomial we just created to make the trinomial. Square the first term, x squared. Square the last term, that'll be the last term in the trinomial, plus 4. And to find the middle term of this trinomial, multiply these two together and take the opposite sign. So. Uh, 2x minus 2x. There, we factored the uh, sum of two cubes. And I think I want to show you how to factor uh, the difference of two cubes at the same time as a bonus lesson. So here we go. x cubed minus 27b cubed. That's not 27. And I am just going to erase it. Because I don't feel like starting this thing over again. x cubed minus 27b cubed. All right. It's going to be factored into a binomial and a trinomial. The binomial, replicate the sign, take the cube root of that cube root of 27 b cubed is 3b. Okay, square the first term, x squared. Square the second term, plus 9b squared. Nice telephone ring in the background, I'm sure. Multiply those two together, negative 3bx. Change the sign, plus 3x B. Okay, that's how you factor the sum of two cubes or the difference of two cubes. Now that we have a factored set each of these equal to zero, you're going to get x equals negative two. That is your vertical asymptote. And this cannot be factored 
and the roots are imaginary so there are no other vertical asymptotes. Now to find the horizontal asymptote, let's go ahead and look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Degree of the numerator, 2. Degree of the denominator, 3. The degree of the uh, numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. You're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Let's go ahead and look at the next function. Where is that denominator going to be undefined? Well, you can't factor anything there. So why don't we go ahead and just set that um, expression in the denominator equal to 0. 5x squared plus 6 equals 0. Subtract 6 from both sides. 5x squared equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 5 x squared equals negative six-fifths. Well, it looks like to me that you're going to have imaginary numbers. This function will be defined for all x's. That results in no vertical asymptote. So what about horizontal asymptote. Let's look at the degrees of the numerator and denominator. Degree of the numerator, 2. Degree of the denominator, 2. The degree of the numerator and denominator are the same. So it will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals lead coefficients 3 and 5. y equals 3 fifths will be the horizontal asymptote. And now for the last function. It looks like we can factor some things in the denominator, so why don't we do that first? It looks like we can pull out a 25 and we can pull out an x squared. That will be x minus 3, won't it? Sure. So the denominator is 0 at, which also means it's undefined at those. So vertical asymptotes at x equals 0. and x equals 3. How about a horizontal asymptote? The lead, uh, the degree of the numerator is 4, the degree of the denominator is 3, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Vertical asymptote, not going to happen. And I really think that that's all I have to say about rational functions and asymptotes at this time. This has not been a pleasure for me, but I'm done. See you tomorrow morning.